Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator the Motivator, and this is episode 120, Self-Righteous. Guys, welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast, a podcast that focuses on those three pillars of fitness, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness, to help us grow closer to the Lord on this journey we call life. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. Thank you for being here. I truly appreciate uh, all the support you guys have done and shown over the past couple years. If you um, are returning... Welcome back. Um, this is a obviously a live episode, so I, I don't really have a, um, a format that I, I follow. I'm just trying to spitball through here. We're going to talk about what it means to be self-righteous uh, using the book Press On by uh, Matt Porth, Travis Price, and Nate Norman. I've had Nate on the podcast before. You guys need to go check out. I believe it's episode, I want to say 86, uh, somewhere in that range. He's an awesome dude, so make sure you check out uh, that episode. This is a phenomenal devotional series. I think you guys should all pick up a copy. I'll put a link in the description once I get this all uploaded, everything like that. But again, welcome to the podcast. Thank you all for being here. Uh, you guys are awesome. Make sure you check out the Three Pillars Podcast website, Three Pillars Podcast at WordPress.com. And also check us out on Good Pods. Good Pods is a podcast discovery platform that helps little podcasts like mine get discovered and out to the winds. All right. If you're on Good Pods, make sure you check out Joe Rusiello at the Sword of the Spirit podcast. He does a phenomenal teaching every Thursday and every Sunday. His new episode just dropped uh, last night and early this morning, so make sure you check out Joe over there right now. We're going to start out with a quick word of prayer as always, and then we're going to dive right into the top, the content. We're going to talk about what it means to be self-righteous. How does that affect your relationship with God and others? Here's a minute. So without further ado, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We just praise your name on high. Thank you for giving us a humble heart. Thank you for showing us what it means to uh, to be humble and not to be self-righteous, Lord. Thank you for, for guiding us and directing us all the days of our lives, Lord. We know we are not perfect. We know we are sinners. We know we fall short each and every day, but you are there to pick us back up and set us back on a path and, and bring us closer to you every single day. Lord, be with me today. Give me the words to say. Give anybody tuning into this, the eyes to see, ears to hear, and hearts to receive anything that grows them closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, self-righteous. What does it mean? What am I doing here? See if anybody's up and rolling too. <clears throat> so, um, I'm still, I haven't done live enough to really know what's going on. So, we're going to pretend for a minute. <laughs> so, Self-righteous. Again, press on this devotional book. You need to check it out. It's on Amazon. I'll put the links in the description. Nate, if you watch this later on, you're the man. Travis and Matt, uh, you guys are awesome too. They they get after it every day, uh, mentally, physically, and spiritually. That's why uh, I think the Lord brought myself and Nate together on Twitter uh, because of that. So I got nothing but love for those guys. Make sure you check out this book. We're going to read a little um, devotional from here. This is Devotion 11. It's Self-Righteous by Travis Price. We're going to read it. We're going to talk about it. And we're going to see if it edifies us. I know it will. I might have cheated a little bit and read ahead. But we're going to jump right in, okay? So, Self-Righteous by Travis Price. The lead pastor of Lake Murray Baptist Church, David Sons, recently cited the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector in Luke 18. So this is a passage coming from Luke 18, verses 10 through 14. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I am not like the other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes all of that I give tithes all of that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Again, Luke 18, 10 through 14. Pastor Sons reminded the congregation that no one is so bad that they can't be saved, and no one is so good that they don't have to be. Remember, too, the differences in the two criminals beside Jesus on the cross. One criminal rebukes Jesus, telling him to save himself if he is truly the Messiah. The other repents and says to him, and Jesus says to him, truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. That's Luke 23, 43. 
The tax collector and the criminal weren't so bad that they couldn't be saved. The Pharisee was not so good he didn't have to be saved. You and I are not... You and I are not so bad that we can't experience the salvation of Jesus. We must, like the prodigal son, return to the feet of our father. Travis, thank you for writing this devotional with your with your boys. Um, amen. So self-righteousness, as we saw in, in the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, you, everybody knows a self-righteous person. Everybody has probably been self-righteous at one point or another in their lives. There's a difference between bragging on yourself and giving, displaying your talents, if that makes sense. You know, if you're on a, if you're on a job interview, for example, they're going to ask you about your past, your accomplishments, things like that. Me personally, I have a hard time telling people uh, how awesome I am. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a guy. I'm a regular dude. I like to think I work hard. I do things. I put out. I make things happen. This, that, and the other. But I don't go around saying, "Hey, this is what I did." And blah blah blah, and all the all these things like the like the Pharisee did. I'm not an adulterer. I'm not an extortionist. I fast twice a week. You know, I tithe and all these things. He, he's he's announcing it so everybody can hear it. I've talked many times, and I like to think this is the model of my life and leadership example is just to live an example, and people will see it. And they will want to come to know the Lord. They want to be more like you because of your example, the positive example you set, rather than you just going around saying all the things you did without any uh, any backing to that at all. And that Pharisee may very well fast twice a week, and he may very well um, uh, tithe all his things like that, <clears throat> but he's not humble about it, like the like the tax collector who he says, "Lord, I'm a sinner. I am." In the muck, I have had lustful thoughts. I collect taxes from these people who don't have anything. I extort people, but I'm trying to be better for you. Help me. It's basically what he's getting at. And that should how we, that's how we should be daily. Is Lord humble me, keep my heart uh, focused on you. Help me shine your light through me. Use me as a tool. Use me to help the world around. Because you're the only person, Lord, who can can save me, who gives me salvation. And that's the truth of the matter. Just like, uh, just like Travis says at the end, you are not, you and I are not so bad that we can't experience the salvation of Jesus. There's Jesus paid the price. There's nothing you can do to earn your salvation. Just like there's nothing you can do to lose it. There's no there's no sin that can't be redeemed. But again. If your heart is not in the right place, and the Lord knows your heart, it's a lot of these. You know, people say, "Oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm reformed, 100 percent," but they keep doing their, their same, their same wicked ways. That's that's not, that's not it, guys. Your your heart has to be in the right place. You have to be humble. You can't be self righteous. If you go around saying how much better you are than everybody else all the time, people see right through that. There's a lot of people going through some hard times right now. And if you're going around saying, oh, how, how awesome you are and how much you pray and how involved you are in a church, instead of just doing that stuff and being humble about it, people are going to see right through this facade because you are now glorifying yourself rather than the Lord. You're going around saying, oh, I do all these things. Look at me. Worship me. It's kind of what you're getting at when you say I'm self-righteous. You're trying to let everybody know that you're letting everybody know that you should be this shining example of who people should follow and how to be and how to act, but your heart's not in the right place. If you do all those things and you just kind of in the shadows, hey, this you know, there's time for accolade. I get it. You know, you have a big project in 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 school. You have an awesome mission. I had a a, a, a mission. A training mission in the Marine Corps that you know I've had had several that I've led and have gotten you know accolade for. Hey, you did a great job, Sergeant Tobin or Corporal Tobin or whatever it was at the time. And, and it's hey, thanks, you know, just doing my job. Like that's that's it, okay. But if you go around and say, hey, you remember you know when I did this and we led that and blah 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 and this was you know, it makes yourself sound too puffed up. And that's not how we want to be. You need to be humble about things. 
That way, when you're talking to other people, you're more approachable, at least in my opinion. If you're going around being this all uh, holier-than-thou, self-righteous person, it's going to be hard for just the average person to come up and just try to talk to you and learn from you. And Because you, you I, I, I can't be at that level of, of perfection because you know, I don't feel comfortable talking with you. <laughs> but is it really perfect, being self-righteous? No. You have you humility is 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 again the opposite of pride. That was the greatest sin uh, for the devil at, the, at least at the beginning of time. His pride, thinking he could be God, whereas being hu humble is the cure for that. We did a whole episode on that uh, based off of Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis. If you are that self righteous and you are like this Pharisee. You're going to you're going to really set yourself up. Almost, you, it's just natural that you're going to try to set yourself up to be at or equal or even above God. That's just the natural progression of things. That's how we are as humans, especially when other people start to, oh, you're so awesome, you're so holy, you're so wonderful. You start, oh man, this is this feels great. This this kind of like worship and adoration feels great. I should do this more. So I'm going to continue telling people how awesome and great and things that. And that's just a, a false sense of. It's, it's a, it's, it's a false sense of self worth. You might be a great person. But if you go around shoving that down everybody else's throat, especially somebody who's just having a hard time and who's trying to be at that level, it's just going to push them down in that dirt and in the mud farther. It's almost like you're stepping on their head just so you can show everybody how awesome you are. Instead, maybe say, hey, how can I help you? We can do this together. Or pull somebody else up. Say, hey, this person has done a fantastic job in this ministry. This person's done a fantastic job at work. This person's done a fantastic job on this operation in the Marines. This person has, you put in the work, well done, next time. Uh, you can lead this or next time get, you know, give somebody else more responsibility or or try to help somebody uh, elevate themselves but and do that in a humble way. Don't take all the credit for yourself. <laughs> Again, that's what the Pharisees do. He's trying to take all this credit for himself instead of giving glory to the Lord. Whereas the tax collector is like, Lord, you you got this. I am just I'm smoked. I'm burnt out. I'm done. Help renew me. And that should be our prayer every day. Lord, renew me. Help me go forth in the world being the light of the world, being as best as I can for you because this is what you've called me to do. And I can't do this alone. I, I'm, I'm chained by my own flesh. Help free me of these chains so I can go forward into the, the earth to advance your kingdom. But help me do it in a, in, in a way that magnifies you and not me. And that should be the prayer every day. Don't let yourself be... Don't don't put yourself up so high that that you can't have a slice of humble pie once in a while. I've seen too many people in this world who need the whole thing, not just a slice of that humble pie, because they are way too into themselves. And again, sometimes there is a place for hate. Um, you you have to you know talk about your accomplishments. Again, it's okay to do it. If it's in a setting that's going to, I call it a controlled laboratory setting because if somebody, I'm not just going to go around and say, hey, this is how awesome I am. If somebody asks me, hey, what did you do in the Marine Corps? Or how was it in the Marine Corps? Or how, what are you doing at work right now? Have you done anything cool? Well, yeah, I've done this, this, and this. I sold this thing and had an, an awesome result over here. I'm not going to get into the details um, because some of it's a little sensitive, but it's okay to say, hey, this is, is what I do and this is how I make a change in the world. And if you'd like to be a part of this, let's do it together. Just like, you know, in the gym, talking about your fitness. Hey, I, I saw you hit a, hit a PR the other day. Well done. You, tell, you say that to somebody else. Good, good job. Yeah, man, I saw you hit something the other day. I wanted to be like that. Awesome. Let's do this together. Let's work out together. Or especially in, in the faith, how it's like, man, I see you just having this life that's, you know, I'd like to be a part of. How do I do this? Well, first of all, do you know the Lord? Have you read your Bible? Let's get into that. Let me t show you who you are in Jesus. Let me show you how much he loves you. Even though we are not even worthy eating the, the crumbs from his table, he loves us. 
holy smokes, eye opener. You can start bringing more people to the fold that way. That's the ultimate goal is to not be self-righteous and be humble. So remember, as Travis said, we must, like the prodigal son, return to the feet of our father. We come back broken, battered, uh, indebted, scarred, just mucky. But we come back, and what does he do? He welcomes us with open arms. He welcomes us, us to the fullness of the kingdom, despite our flaws. So don't be self-righteous. Be humble. Okay? Short, quick, down and dirty. Um, that's all I got for you guys this week. Thank you for tuning in. Again, I'm Chase Tobin. This is the Three Pillars Podcast. If you like this episode, if you like this podcast, drop a comment. Let me know where you're from. Let me know how you're doing. Um, this is just kind of a... a a sight read, if you will. I like to do this from time to time. I like, I like and that's why I like this devotional because I can always get something out of it. Press on, there it is in the in the camera, by uh, Nate Norman, uh, Travis Price, and Matt Porth. These guys crush it. I like again. I like to do a live read. I like to do it kind of kind of a spot read. Do stuff on the spot. Keeps me kind of mentally engaged. I'm always going to get something out of this book. Um, so shout out to those guys. I'll put a link in the description once I get all this stuff squared away. Next week. As a lot of you guys liked the allegory of Aslan a couple weeks ago. I'm going to do the allegory of Aragorn very soon. If not next week, the week after that. Um, I'm going to have some time. That's going to be a little bit of a longer one. I've got some notes I put together, uh, kind of drawing the parallels between Aragorn and Jesus, just kind of like we did Aslan and Jesus. I think you guys are going to appreciate it. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you check out the Three Pillars Podcast website, Three Pillars Podcast at WordPress.com. Also, check us out on Good Pods and anywhere you are tuning into this, whether it be on YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey, if you're on Apple, Amazon, Spotify, you name it, wherever you're finding this podcast, please share it, leave a rating and review, check us out on Facebook, check me out on Twitter, I've got Instagram. Anywhere that you were at, I probably have a Three Pillars Podcast presence, if not my own personal page. So make sure you check all that out. You guys have a fantastic Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. We're going to end with a quick word of prayer as always, and then we'll uh, catch up next week. Good to go? So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We praise your name on high. We just are so thankful that despite our flaws, despite our sins, despite our just imperfection, the perfect creator of the universe, Lord, you love us anyways. You want us to be better. You want us to be humble. You want us to relate to people and show them that despite their flaws, you love them too. And that we can all come in together broken, battered, bashed, but we can find renewal, we can find restoration, and we can find salvation in you, Lord. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Lord, I ask that you bless anybody tuning into this podcast, If you whether it's this episode or any other episode, bless them with abundance, bless them with just peace. Lord, give them strength to endure any trials that they might be facing in life. And Lord, increase their faith in you every single day. Lord, we love you. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, I hope you have a phenomenal weekend. Stay tuned for the allegory of Aragorn. You're going to appreciate that very much. Until next time, Tobinator, out.